Hello there, everybody. This is Cholera, and welcome to a dual commentary. Um, I'm going to start off doing the dual commentary with Diggity. I might end up doing it with Rise, but uh, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, tonight, we're going to be watching um, KTF versus SKT1, a series that was played just a, a few hours ago, May 22nd, 2009, and it was recommended to me. Uh, this first game is going to be Luxury versus the Zerg, so uh, it's going to be interesting. I think uh, this is going to be a good ZVZ here. Both of these players... Um, well, the Luxury obviously uh, won the last MSL, so he's certainly a very impressive player. The, the Zerg is really someone we thought was going to be good, but just like the rest of the SKT uh, Zergs, they, he hasn't really been doing that well recently, I think. For the record, I never thought he was going to be good. I thought he was just one of those guys who would be an okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it wasn't Moltrap either. Moltrap also didn't think he was going to be good. Who did? It, I think it might have been Rise, and I think it might have been uh, a couple of the other commentators who were like, this guy is going to be as good as... Bisu is Protoss, and he's Savior, and all these other awesome Zerg combined. I never bought it. He's still decent. He's not horrible. Actually, the guy I think who's going to make uh, a big splash in the upcoming uh, future is Zero, because he's been... I've said it before in other commentaries, I'll say it again, he's been deliciously mo mediocre, and those deliciously mediocre turn players, especially early on, turn into fantastic <laughs> players. The last one I thought of uh, well. that was like that was Jangby, <laughs> but anyway, this is going to be on Battle Royale, pretty standard Zerg versus Zerg map. Looks like in the... Oh, no, it's not, actually. Ha! Huh, God's Garden, just kidding. Um, looks okay with the Zerg starting in white at the 2 o'clock position. We have Luxury starting in the upper left-hand corner. Between these two, I'm going to have to... Ooh, I'm going to have to pull Ryze in, and we'll set him in the third spot while Cholera is talking. But I'm going to favor the Zerg a little bit in this uh, situation just because I don't feel like Luxury's been playing all that well. All right, well, I guess we are going to try to get Ryze in here. I don't know if he'll be able to sync up with us. But um, regardless, uh, let's take a look at what's going to happen here. Uh, we've got, of course, um, yeah, Luxury looks like... Um, he's going to be the, uh, well, actually, you know what? I didn't catch the colors. I will in a second, though. Green Zerg. Yeah, the Zerg, white. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So Luxury is uh, green and SKT1's. The Zerg is white. Um, I think uh, Zero is, has already shown himself, actually, to be pretty good. I mean, beyond mediocre, certainly. He was the guy who uh, won for the Infested Terrans against a Protoss player. That's right, of course. If you look up my account, uh, he went for Infested Terrans against Cal on that new map, Holy uh, Holy World, where you have that neutral command center. And, of course, he made it to uh, the round of four of the last MSL, where he lost to Luxury. Oh, yeah! Uh, well, Zero lost to Luxury. That's right. We're talking about the Zerg here. Um, the Zerg lost a long time ago to Midas <laughs> on uh, a bunch of maps like Plasma, so um, really he hasn't shown since then really that he's a, he's a star or anything, unlike Zero, who uh, I, I'd say is definitely rising. Um, anyway, we're going to be seeing what kind of builds they are. They're going to be 12-something, I feel. There it is. It is going to be a 12 pool for both players, and since God's Garden's got that protected natural, I think both are probably going to pick up an expansion now. Yeah, it's one of those maps where because you have, uh, first of all, four-player map that always makes uh, 12 hatches at least in on paper viable, because if you don't have that scout denied, uh, you can do it. But at the very least, if you don't go for a 12 hatch, at least at the uh, distance, because let's say you spawned upper left, bottom right, then you can pull it off. That's still extreme risk, but either player both going, it looks like putting down a spawning pool with gas, they can pick up their expansions because they're easy to hold. You've got them behind your ramp. Uh, or you sh I should say they're down a ramp behind your base, so if you hold your ramp, you hold two expansions, so it's a pretty nice economy map, actually, for Zerg. And I uh, I think it makes fun Zerg versus Zerg games, just because you do have that extra economy. Yeah, we're going to throw a Rise right in here. I think he synced up with us. Maybe. Or maybe. Or he's um, AFK. All right. Yeah, he's AFK, I guess. <laughs> he's a cute girl hiding her face in case... Uh, well, that, that probably passed a little bit ago, but um, anyway, we've got uh, both both players are expanding, I think, to their natural expansions, which makes a lot of sense. Um, certainly, uh, we'll see who decides to go for speed, if either of them do, or if they're going to go for lair first. It looks like we've got the Zerg went for lair, and I think um, we might be seeing uh, we might be seeing speed first here for for Luxury, so this is interesting. I mean, this is going to set Luxury slightly behind in his tech, and uh, we'll see what his reaction is. I think, honestly, since he is the better player, I would favor him not to try to go all in links or something. Instead, just, uh, you know, catch up, go for Mutalist anyway, um, and just be a little bit slower. I, I'm sure that's probably what he's thinking. 
I'm actually reverse situation. You got the Zerg who went for speed, Luxury who went for the faster lair. And I think this is actually going to pay off for Luxury just because uh, the Zerglings, first of all, not pushing oh, the I'm forward sorry, position. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and additionally, I don't know if he's behind on um, gas or something like that, but uh, at the very least, Luxury, he's not going to have, because you can hold that ramp on the front, he's got enough lings to hold that against speed for quite some time. And I don't think he's going to have any problems having Mutalisks out at close position to pick off those Zerglings uh, by the time the Zerglings would have any threat of kind of going in. But it looks like the Zerg going end around that Overlord trying to sneak the Zerg past uh, but again I don't see this being all that effective I think luxury is gonna have plenty of time with that number of lings uh, to blockade but maybe the Zerg with some speed will be able to sneak something past will be able to kill at least one of those Zerglings and then just kind of jet the rest in and go pick off some drones we'll see oh he does he managed to break through luxury readjusting and there's only four left wow that was some great micro actually uh, and it looks like he is gonna be able to push in and the second hatchery now going up but the drones having to come off the line so luxury taking some hits early here yeah, I mean, Luxury might uh, actually lose this one. Wow, the Zerg has gotten a lot more lings than Luxury. Luxury is just stalling right now for that Sunken Colony to go up, of course. Um, and he's going to have to defend it, or else he is going to lose this game here. The Zerg has already gotten a surround around the Sunken before the Sunken even goes up. And now uh, Sunken finally goes up, but gets off a kick. One hit, and that's it. And I think that's it for Luxury also. The Zerg just uh, definitely producing a ton of lings here. And this is, yeah, this is definitely going to be it. Uh, GG coming from Luxury. Fast one from the Zerg. I like his strategy, actually. Um, he saw what he needed to do, and uh, sorry about getting the colors mixed up, but I think um, basically he was thinking, I probably can't beat Luxury in the longer game. I'm going to just try to end it earlier, and uh, it worked out perfectly for him. He changed his hair. Yeah, he did. There we got right. He hurt his hand. Yeah, I... <laughs> I was really surprised he was able to break up the ramp. I thought Luxury would be playing a little bit more cautiously, save a few more larvae, so as soon as those lings came up, you'd be able to produce enough zerglings to kind of counterattack and uh, hold that off or bring them up to support the ramp. But yeah, just a couple zerglings picked off. And that was really good micro, actually. I think uh, just zergling to zergling, even going uphill, he seemed to uh, be able to break through with about equivalent number of lings end up uh, ahead somehow, which is always amazing whenever I see it, because how, how do you even do that? I don't know. But uh, but yeah, the, the support zerglings running up the ramp just able to inflict a ton of damage. Luxury just looked really flat that game. Yeah, I, I think um, that's pretty much all I have to say. This, this should be a start of an exciting <laughs> series, though. We were recommended so, uh, to do this. Here's something and, uh, odd happens somewhere in this set. I don't know anything more than something odd happens. But anyway, I don't know. I worry for Luxury. He's been playing very flat lately, so maybe he'll pick it up some other series. But KTF in general has been playing flat. Hopefully. Anyway, thanks. Well, we'll uh, I'm probably going to ditch the rest of the commentaries. I'll hang it, uh, hand it over to Ryzen Cholera for the rest. All right. See you later, Diggity, and uh, stay tuned for game two.